Yo, what's up guys? So today we are gonna see, what if, Ak Naruto got harem with Ino, Anko, Kurenai and Tamari, part 2. Hope you'll enjoy this video. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Random Hobo, link is in the description, and also subscribe to my channel, and like this video. So let's get into the video. Naruto jabbed his punches repeatedly trying to recreate the same image he had seen with the caterpillar man. Naruto had been at it for weeks, but he wasn't improving nearly fast enough. When Naruto had seen the man exert rapid kicks and punches against some training posts, the whiskered blonde had stood watching it all. The man's punches and kicks were so ferocious, air seemed to have coated his movement with friction due to the intense speed. As soon as the puncher kick extended, as far as it would go, the air that coated his hand would then slam into whatever was in the direction of his kicker punch. Apparently, the man in green was just going that fast and strong. It had been a whole day since the incident with the puppy, and every day since then, Naruto had been working on his tajutsu well. He was trying to, but he didn't know how to make himself as fast as the caterpillar man. Quite frankly, it was pissing him off. Naruto let out a frustrated growl. How the hell does he do it? Is he even human? Like how the hell does someone? Hello my youthful friend. A booming earnest voice came. Naruto paled, shit. Naruto turned and faced the eccentric man as he forced a tight smile on his face. Hello sir. The man let out a booming laugh. My dear youthful friend, there is no need to address me in such a manner. It is most certainly a youthful feeling to be addressed as such. You can address me as the green beast of Kanoha. Or rather than that, you can call me by my other youthful moniker. That title is nothing other than Kanoha's noble beast. Mido guide the mighty green Kanoha gentle beast at your service. Naruto sweat dropped. This guy is weird as hell I better get the hell out of here. Okay um guy said I was just going to go and leave, so I'll pardon me. Suddenly, the exuberant demeanor of guy ceased to exist, as a more ominous presence exuded from his person. Why must you go? You seem keenly interested in my training. It is certainly most youthful for someone to watch someone with introducing themselves beforehand. Naruto gulped and paled once more. Shit. He knew. He's probably gonna kill me. I don't stand a chance against someone like him. What the hell should I do? Should I try and run or should I just apologize and get my beating now deciding that running away might incite a more brutal beating? Naruto kneeled and bowed, touching his forehead to the ground. Visibly shaking, Naruto managed to crack out an apology in a broken voice. I am SS sorry sir. I I, I was just training when I s stumbled upon you sir. P please don't hurt me me too much. I frowned, the voice was quiet and broken, just what have they done to you Naruto-kun? He wished he could have been there for the boy, but as one of Kanoha's top, guy was forced to do many ADS ranked missions. Hence the reason he wasn't in Kanoha majority of his time. Oh, though, he knew of the rotten behavior of the villagers and various shinobis, but he never expected the usually cheerful boy to be like this. Broken. I could see the fear and shame in the boy's eyes. The sorrow and the suffering guy shook his head and took on his usual exuberant manner. It would do no good for him to reprimand the boy. Naruto waited with his head bowed trembling with unbridled fear. So it came to him a great surprise when he heard an equally unrestrained laughter. Confusion on his face, Naruto looked up to see the bull cut man had thrown his head back with his hands on his hips. Never fear the power of youth my dear boy. Stand proud and never fall short of yourself. Let the power of youth guide you. Naruto was confused, just what the hell was this guy, pun intended, saying. Did you want him to stand up? Naruto slowly got up all the while watching the man rant on about the springtime of youth. Seeing that the man didn't seem to be focused on him, Naruto slowly backed away before turning to leave. As Naruto walked away, he let out a sigh of relief, that guy was dangerously happy. In fact, if he hadn't gotten away in time, Naruto was sure he would have been involved in some bad crazy shit with that. A strong grip found itself on Naruto's shoulder, effectively stopping him from moving. Yep. Kami sure must have hated him. And where are you going my friend? With the springtime of youth guiding yes to the will of fire, we shall be the greatest noble gentle beasts to have ever lived. Yep. It was confirmed, Kami hated him alright. Naruto fell face first into the grass and groaned as every muscle in his body screamed in protest to any movement. He has spent two weeks with Gai Sensei and found it to be the worst idea ever. Apparently, Gai Sensei knew all along that Naruto had been watching him train. So Naruto had asked why it took so long for him to actually confront him if the man knew he was there the whole time. His answer was absolutely absurd. Youth. That was all he said. Literally. Youth. With a big ass questioning tone ending the answer. What kind of backwards ass answer was that? Whatever, Naruto knew he couldn't possibly understand anything about this strange man. The man was just too damn youthful. That was the most appropriate way Naruto could put it. Well, there were other words he could use to describe the man, but it was borderline insulting if not insulting at all. The conversation steered to Naruto and Guy actually introducing themselves to each other. That in turn, led to the conversation about why Naruto was watching him. Hesitantly, Naruto told him he was trying to train himself by watching them, because no one ever tried to help him. Waterfalls gushed out of Guy's eyes, as he embraced them into an extremely bone-crushing hug. 
screaming things along the lines of how youthful this generation was, and how everyone was youthful for neglecting the hidden gem that was Naruto. Naruto felt touched even though he was running out of air. The pressure was immediately released, and he was given some space, as Guy kneeled, and placed both his hands on the blonde's shoulder. Naruto hurriedly sucked, and replaced the oxygen that was sorely missing in his lungs. My dear youthful Naruto-kun, I would be honored to have you under my tutelage. Please accept my youthful plea. Guy all, but beg. Bewildered, Naruto simply nodded, and rushed out a carefree, as sure Guy sensei. Just stop crying, please. Unbeknownst to Naruto, those words would forever indebt him into a cycle of torture for Kami knows how long. That very same day, Guy sensei decided that the free time Naruto had for the rest of the month, due to the Ichiha massacre incident, should be taken advantage of. Every single second of it. So Guy had Naruto stretch out right then, and there right before forcing him into a brittle workout regimen. Push-ups on top of push-ups, sprints after sprints, sit-ups after sit-ups, it was a continuous cycle of plyometrics, exercises that used body weight as the primary conditioning factor. That was his first day training with Guy Sensei, and his body was absolutely destroyed. He could barely get home, and once he did, he simply sat in the tub with the shower head running. He was so goddamn tired that he almost fell asleep in the bathtub. The freaking bathtub. Of course, the very next day, he found himself going back to that training ground like Guy Sensei had told him to. To his horror, he found that he would be put through the same damn torturous routine. Only with added repetition of all the exercises. This repetitive yet grueling training routine continued for the rest of the first week. When Naruto had asked why all he was doing basic exercises. Guy just looked at him with a knowing look. Ah. My dear Naruto-kun. You must be patient. But I suppose I could tell you so your youth doesn't diminish. This week was dedicated to enhance your physical traits, especially your speed. We will continue this for the rest of this week before I teach you my own personal style. Guy finished with a cherry smile, and his patent nice guy pose. Naruto ignored the hideous pose with stars in his eyes, your own personal style yada. I'm gonna be such a baddest databeo. Guy chuckled before beaming with his ultra white teeth, indeed Naruto-kun. We will indeed reach the peak of youth. Humped up, Naruto cheered with his exuberant sensei, completely unaware of the torturer, training he was in for. Yo Jiji. Sir Toby hears and smiled, and looked up to the source of the voice. Ah oh, hello Naruto-kun. How are you? I'm pretty youthful. Instantly hearing the word youthful, Sandame stood in front of Naruto with a very serious look on his face. How far did you fall Naruto? How deep has he rooted his influence into you? I will not allow for this treachery to stand, Nani. What the hell are you talking about Jiji? Empty your belongings right now. The village leader screamed. Needless to say, when the most powerful ninja in the entire village, and arguably the entire elemental nation screamed at you in a wild and crazed manner, you obey. Without missing a beat, Naruto threw out all his stuff, which wasn't a lot, just a bunch of random snacks, and a green leotard suit that he had received from Guy Sensei several moments ago. Immediately spotting the heinous clothing apparel, the man known as the Professor, weaved through rapid hand signs before screaming, Kaden. Dekaku no Jutsu. Fire release. Great fireball technique. A giant ball of flame crashed into the leotard, effectively obliterating it from existence. Sir Toby hears inside, as he plopped down into his seat, he wiped a sweat that had been rolling down his forehead, phew, crisis avoided, right Naruto-kun. Naruto stared blankly at the pile of ashes in front of him. Sure if you say so Jiji. Sandain clasped his hands together with a serene smile on his face. Now Naruto-kun, what did you come here for? Or is this just a surprise visit? Naruto sweat dropped at the fact that the village leader was pretending that the event of what just transpired didn't even happen. Oh well. Actually Jiji I know this might sound a bit crazy, Naruto pursed his lips, but Irma was maybe wondering I if I could drop out of the academy. A mixture of surprise and horror fixed itself onto the old wizen man, Naruto. I thought you wanted to become a ninja. Sirotobi paled, there wasn't anything he could do to stop the young boy, but seeing as he was the Yandame's heir, Sirotobi didn't think there were any other avenues for the Force legacy. Oh no Jiji. Naruto hastily spoke, seeing the mini panic attack that the old man was having, I still want to be a shinobi I was just wondering if I can get an apprenticeship. I think I found a teacher, and I recall that reading apprenticeships takes you out of the academy until the genin exam or something like that, right? Sir Toby nodded, indeed. If one were to find a jounin or a takubetsu jounin, special that was willing to teach them, they could, with the, and council's approval, skip out on the rudimentary years of the academy. Are you still with me? Naruto nodded excitedly, he had read something along those lines before he got kicked out of the library several days ago. Now if he could just get Guy Sensei to agree with being his mentor, he could finally get out of the damn academy. If you were to successfully find a sensei, someone who I would evaluate and deem worthy, you would train with him or her after a few pieces of paper get approved and wet it. You would then be taken out of the academy, as I told you, until either the last few weeks of the academy or the last year, whichever your mentor and I think would suit you better. No matter what though, you will be placed back into the academy for team placement and tests. 
Naruto frowned, would I have to be on a team? Couldn't I just continue under the apprenticeship of the teacher? Sirotobi shook his head, unfortunately no, there are very few exceptions in that case, but usually no. Kanoha's shinobis should be building a sense of familiarity with each other, hence the four-man cell that consists of three genins, and one. It is essential for a team to work together, as a unit. In fact, you should try, and build a sense of camaraderie amongst your classmates while you can, it may even save your life one day. Naruto's frown became even more pronounced, but Jiji. How am I supposed to build a sense of camera sense of kama camera what was that word Jiji? Sirotobi chuckled, camaraderie is the word you're looking for, it means a bond that has been developed because you spend time with the person a lot, oh? Naruto took a blank look, but then he took on an excited look, so does that mean we have a camera caramel care ga? The fancy bond word. Do we have one of those Jiji? The sandame Hokage laughed heartily, we sure do Naruto-kun, one of the closest. Naruto beamed before his face fell into a somewhat of a distraught state, but Jiji how am I supposed to build that bond with others, if no one is willing to try? It takes two people trying to have any form of relationship. Sirotobi looked thoughtfully at the now 10 year old boy. It surprised him that such a young child could voice that kind of a deep thought. You're right Naruto-kun, it seems in my old age that I tend to forget about a lot of things. I'm sorry. Naruto waved him off. It's okay Jiji, cause we still have that bond, and, as long as you're there, I think I'll be okay. A pang of sadness shot through the heart of the Sandane. How could one boy who bears the weight of such a massive burden, remain so vigilant? The Hidden Leaf's Hokage gave Naruto a fond smile, indeed Naruto. Now, who or what gave you the idea of taking on an apprenticeship? Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly, well no one actually gave me the idea, but I've been training with Gai Sensei lately, and he's such a great teacher, and on top of that the academy well you know, I don't really have a lot of friends there, and it feels like some people are out to get me. Sirotobi hears and face palmed, of course it was Gai, that would explain the youthfulness of Naruto's verbal use of the curse word earlier. Sandame then narrowed his eyes, as he registered the rest of the young Jinchuriki's words. Sirotobi sighed, I'm sorry Naruto-kun, but Maito Gai is one of our top three of Konoha, and Konoha is in dire need of her strongest ninja. And because, what? Top three. Suguri. Naruto screamed excitedly. The Hokage sent Naruto a look. Whoops, sorry Jiji, I just got a bit excited Naruto apologized bashfully. It's fine, just make sure to let other people finish their speech. Sirotobi coughed, a hem back to what I was saying, because he is such a powerful shinobi, dangerous missions often dictate him to take it. Usually, he can back out of it, but at the moment, we need every ninja we can get. I can try, and talk to him, and the council, but there is no guarantee. Yada. Thank you Jiji. Naruto, I'm not promising anything. Sandame warned. I know, but you trying for me is more than enough for now. Naruto honestly replied. They awarded him with a warm smile before playfully scowling. Alright, now scramble on Naruto, these paperwork aren't going to do themselves. Naruto waved goodbye, and eagerly ran to find out just where the caterpillar eyebrow was. The Sandame then spoke to seemingly no one, how much did you hear? An Anbu member suddenly materialized, and replied lazily, enough for me to know he wants to get an apprenticeship with Guy. The wise and old man chuckled, indeed so how is that going by the way? May I remind you that this is your first report for the task I've given you. The tall Inu mask with a combination of white and silver hair yawned, hi hi Hokage sama regarding the A-rank mission of investigating what Naruto Uzumaki has been doing for the duration of the break from school. Do I have to do this? The Hokage simply glared in response. Takashi sweat dropped, alright alright, back to it. Let's see, he's been learning some Gokin, Iron Fist. He has the basic beginner katas down already. They look surprised, wow one month, and he's already caught up. Most impressive. Actually Hokage Sama, he's only been training with Guy for a few weeks now, and he's only started the Gokin style several days ago. Sandame's eyes widened, what? That's insane. You are telling me that it took him two to three days to learn the basics. Kaksashi nodded. For him to learn that in a few days would indicate he's a prodigy weight, that would actually make sense seeing, as he learned the cage bunshin, shadow clone, in a single hour, but the academy shows that he's the dead last, but judging from what Naruto said earlier about the people out to get him unless oh no, the Sande murmured to himself softly, yet loud enough for Kakashi to hear. Kakashi was a bit confused, how did a boy know how to perform cage bunshin no jutsu, shadow clone jutsu? That technique was an errant, how the hell did a 10 year old boy learn that? Okage sama did you figure out something regarding the academy? And may I inquire, as to how the boy knows the cage bunch no jutsu, shadow clone jutsu? Kakashi asked with a curious look. Sandame rubbed his head in frustration, as an upset visage was adopted upon his face. At the moment, it is no more than a hunch, but it seems as if the boy's grades are based on a slightly skewed standard compared to the other students. This hunch will be investigated very thoroughly of course, but still to think that the academy teachers were sabotaging a student is most disgraceful. Takashi nodded in agreement, he deduced the sabotaging of Naruto's education to the Kayubi no Kitsune, it made sense, after all, many people were still wounded from the traumatic event a decade ago. 
to Kakashi. Naruto was his sensei's son. As soon as his Anmu service was over, he was going to see that the boy was taken care of one way or another. It was the least he could do for his late sensei. However, Sandame's response didn't answer the question of how Naruto learned an errant kinjutsu. And what about the Hokage-sama? Who taught him to use such a dangerous kinjutsu? Kakashi inquired. No one. Sandame replied gravely. No one would ever teach him anything Kakashi-kun. That is why he is so obsessed with Gai, and becoming his apprentice. Gai isn't beast towards him at all, and he is actually willing to help Naruto-kun. Kakashi took on a perplexed expression, so how did he learn it? If there was no one to teach him, how could he have learned it? Unless he had a scroll, and taught himself it. But even then, it's nearly impossible to learn that from a scroll with a teacher to aid you, much less teach yourself, so how did he? That is exactly what Kakashi did. He taught himself without a teacher in a single hour. Kakashi's eyes narrowed. Wait how how did he get his hands on the scroll? Unless Kakashi's eyes widened, as he realized how the boy got his hands on the scroll. The Mizuki incident. The Sandame nodded solemnly. Kakashi slumped into a chair, as he took off his mask. He's a genius. Kakashi whispered almost reverently. Indeed he is, but he may be more of a kinesthetic genius like his father. Nonetheless, he has an unknown amount of potential, and that is why it is most troubling that the academy teachers were, and most likely still are hindering him. For this reason, I'm sending you on a mission to figure out which teachers are sabotaging him. Do you accept Hata Kakashi? Kakashi's eyes hardened, hi, Hokage-sama. The last week and a half went by fairly quickly, yet Naruto found himself unable to conjure the courage required to talk to the Tojutsu master about becoming his apprentice. Naruto didn't know why he was so scared, maybe it had something to do with asking for something from someone. He has never ever in his short entire life asked someone for something like this. Sure he asked for little things like questions, but that was shot down with the teachers screaming at him or throwing his stuff out the window. Well he supposed he asked for ramen every once in a while, but that was neither here nor there. Deep down inside, Naruto knew what he was scared of. Rejection. He was ashamed to admit it, but he didn't like rejection, even though rejection played a big part of his whole life. He had promised himself, and Iruka sensei that he would become better, but that particular facet of his misfortunate life was always there, looming over him like a never-ending storm. Sure, every once in a while there was a ray of hope like Gai, Jiji, Iruka sensei Itachi, and the Ichiraku family, but good things never lasted. Iruka and Itachi were prime examples of that. It was just how his life went. Regardless, even if Gai sensei rejected him, it wouldn't be anything new to him. Still, Gai was quickly becoming one of his precious people. But being rejected by his precious people is Naruto's ultimate fear. This thought was realized when Itachi had left him. In a way, Naruto had interpreted Itachi leaving Konoha as a way that nothing had tied him to the village, not even Naruto himself. The feeling of rejection from a person Naruto had held in such close and high regard tore him apart. Maybe his life wasn't meant to be enjoyed. Hokage Jiji told him that there was a balance in this world. Maybe his life was weighted in misery and sorrow so others could be better off. Naruto chewed on his inner cheeks as he mulled over his somewhat gloomy thoughts. He sucked in a deep breath and exhaled as he came to a decision. I have to do this today before it's too late. Otherwise I'll be stuck at the academy forever. So with that thought in mind, Naruto set out to find his current Jujutsu teacher. Naruto looked all over the place but couldn't find him. Naruto frowned and tried thinking of where the man could possibly be. He decided he would reach Gai Sensei's favorite training ground, so he headed to Team 9's training ground. Something about this training ground is where he was taught to open gates from his father or something like that. What the hell was that supposed to mean anyways? Everyone knew how to open a gate. You get a key and put it in the hole, or you can pick it. Either way works. Naruto knew how to do both so opening gates wasn't all too impressive to him. Sigh, the foley the boy knew. He searched for hours, he made a bunch of cage bunchins, and directed them everywhere. Through several trials, he learned that he would gain their memories, and regain his chakra on top of that. He briefly wondered, I wonder if they could work with training. Not that it'd be too overpowered. Naruto sighed tiredly, he felt as if he checked every nook and cranny for the self-declared. He decided he would mentally disable his clones in a few minutes if he had no further luck. A few minutes had passed, and gave a frustrated growl, he sent a mental signal to his clones to dispel themselves, and instantaneously felt the effects. He promptly blacked out. Waking up with a searing migraine, Naruto groaned as he righted himself with some difficulty. Eyes half-lidded, Naruto let out a prolonged note to self, do not dispel a hundred clones at once, he duly noted to himself. Naruto smacked his lips and tasted the vague hue of morning breath, gross smells, and tastes like rotten ramen. He must have been sleeping for a short amount of time because the sun was still overhead, shining brightly down on the training grounds he was currently occupying. Well I guess I'll go home for now, Gai-sensei doesn't seem to be around Kono, snap. Naruto suddenly became alert, as he heard the snapping of a twig. The sharp crack came from behind him, as Naruto jumped to his feet, and tense. His eyes panned around the area in which he thought he had heard the disturbance from. As Naruto scanned the area before him, he tried smelling the air for a sign, as to who or what was near him. 
as he took a particular big whiff of air, he relaxed, and let out a breath of relief before he called out, Gai Sensei. I know it's you, you can come out. The shiny-eyed Maito Gai suddenly appeared before Naruto, Ah Naruto-kun. Amazing you were able to detect me. Your youthful senses are still top-notch I see. Much to Gai's surprise, the young man didn't respond. In fact, he looked a bit nervous rather than his usual response of being annoyed or happy with his youthful speech. The eye, with a serious visage, kneeled before the boy, and asked the young whiskered blonde before him with slight worry, Naruto-kun, I sense that there is something troubling you. Naruto gave a nervous chuckle, eh ha well you see guy sensei I was talking to the Jiji about apprenticeships, and I was, uh, wondering I affirm you. The eye, immediately seeing where Naruto was going with this, interrupted. Naruto, as much as I'd love to mentor you, I don't think I'll be able to because Konoha is in dire need of them at the moment. As soon as school starts back up for you, I'll be taking a lot more A and S ranked missions. Guy explained. Oh? The crestfallen Naruto responded. Okay well thanks anyways Guy sensei I still appreciate with what you've taught me so far, and who said our youthful training was over. You must remain youthful my dear Naruto. Guy cried out. Naruto looked confused, but didn't you just say you can't train me anymore? Guy jumped into the air, and did multiple flips before landing in his nice sky pose, teeth shining, he responded with enthusiasm, my dear Naruto-kun. I simply said I would be taking more missions. However, the springtime of youth waits for no one. From here on out, weekends, and breaks shall be dedicated to tojutsu, and youth training. Naruto beamed, as the man continued to rant about youth, some training was better than nothing. The fact that Guy would make time for the class dobe, and the village pariah spoke volume to the young. So happy in his thoughts, the young blonde ran, and tackled the leg of one surprised Maito guy. Said man looked down in surprise, this was the first show of physical affection that Naruto had shown for him. Guy smiled, and reached down to pat the young boy's head, but just as quickly as the young boy had hugged him, he jumped back with morbid horror on his face. The felt an intense terror wrench at his stomach, he had accidentally hugged the man out of the immense gratitude he was feeling. Although he had taken to training with the man, in all the few weeks, he never showed any sort of affection a normal 10-year-old would attach to an older somewhat fatherly figure. Naruto's breath became frantic, as he felt a slight shiver of anxiety take place in his heart. There was no doubt Guy sensei would feel disgusted at the fact that the village pariah had touched him. The azure-eyed boy averted his gaze downward, and quickly apologized, I'm sorry Guy sensei I didn't mean to touch you. I was just so happy that someone wanted to spend more time with me, and I forgot that no one likes me even looking at them, much less. Again, Guy understood the implications the boy was making before he finished his statement. The green clad it then scooped up the boy in a tight hug, and had a ridiculous amount of tears torrenting down his cheeks. Oh Naruto-kun, you must never be afraid to show the passion of youth. Don't you worry about nothing my cute little student. Your youth will never be held back, as long as I, Kanoha's noble and gentle beast, reside here in Kanoha. Guy then went into another speech about super youth, as Naruto lost consciousness from the lack of air. Still, Naruto smiled, as he fell into bliss, he had heard enough of Guy's youthful speech to know he didn't do anything wrong. The rest of the break from school went without much incident. Really train. Eat. Train some more. Sleep. Repeat. That was the cycle that Guy had thrown Naruto in. During that time, Naruto had managed to get the intermediate katas down for the Gokan style. Naruto begged Guy to start teaching him the advanced katas, but apparently the blonde wasn't physically able enough. Thus he had to be taller, quicker, stronger, and most importantly, needed to be faster. Basically, he had to become as un naruto like as possible. Which, by the way, was total bullshit to him. When Naruto heard the prerequisite to learn advanced katas, he became a bit confused. Guy sensei I thought being faster and quicker were the same thing. I nodded sagely, actually, that seems like a common misconception amongst the general consensus. Being fast means you are capable of moving at a high speed. Quickness is how fast you can accelerate. Oh, I see. And truth to be told, Naruto actually did understand. It made sense to him. By furred his massively thick brows in confusion and slight astonishment, you do. He had thought the boy would have needed more explaining. Naruto scowled and nodded, I'm not a baka you know. I gave a hearty laugh and patted the boy. Regardless my youthful student, your quickness is surprising I'd peg you at about a high chunin level. Naruto pouted, what? Is it it man I thought I'd at least be? Guy simply shook his head, I am sure you'll get there one day my youthful student. After all, it's not every day a 10 year old can't say they possess the skills of it to this, Naruto pouted before looking up with determined eyes. He then went on a verbal splurge of how he was gonna be the best. Guy simply looked at the boy with disguised observance, if I were honest Naruto-kun, you'd be mid in level, but we don't want your youthfulness to overflow. Obviously that's an analogy for his ego. Guy smacked the boy in the back, also. I got a gift for you. Naruto halted mid-rant, and looked at his Tejutsu sensei, are you serious sensei? That's freaking awesome wait. Guy sensei, how am I supposed to get taller? Isn't it all genes or whatever? Guy's visage turned from slightly speculative to morbidly serious, Naruto, listen to me. 
I need you to listen and comprehend. This may be the most life-faltering lesson you will have ever heard. Naruto gulped. In order to get taller, Guy started. Naruto nodded furiously with rapt attention. You must stop eating ramen. Wait for it, no? The sullen Naruto walked in into the academy. Guy had taken the entire weekend to revamp Naruto's lifestyle. The mighty Tajutsu specialist had dragged Naruto back to the young Jinchuriki's apartment, screaming how youthful Naruto's diet had been. Naruto had begged his Tajutsu sensei to not do what he thought the eccentric man was about to do. Unfortunately, he did just that. In a fit of green blur, the man had cleaned out Naruto's apartment in mere seconds. He had found everything. And Naruto meant everything. Nothing related to ramen was spared. He even found the secret stash of the limited edition underneath the floorboard. And, as soon as he finished, Guy quickly shouted at heartfelt youth before running to the grocery store and returning with vegetables. A lot of vegetables. Apparently, Guy had somehow managed to obtain several cookbooks from wherever the hell while he went to the store. He came back in a rush and dumped them unceremoniously on the kitchen table before walking over to Naruto. Yash. My dear youthful student, you must study these cookbooks and fix your youthful lifestyle or we shall run to around Kanoha 50 times on not, but our pinky fingers. Naruto paled, he knew full well that guy was being completely serious about that. So for the remainder of his break, Naruto was constantly reading on how to cook healthier and more nutritious food while being guided under guy's tutelage for his tajutsu. So here he was, reading a freaking cookbook in class. Naruto sighed, as the first telltale sign of the academy students entering filtered through his ears, he was probably going to get shit for reading a cookbook in class. Whatever, if he wanted to get any better, then people's opinion of him shouldn't matter to him. Well, that's what he wanted to think, but alas, he was still a 10 year old. Although to his credit, he managed to ignore all the questioning whispers about the dope having a cookbook, and the feeble attempts of his classmates trying to get a reaction out of him. Why does the dope have a recipe book? Probably for a prank. Look, he has a book on nutrition too. It's probably just has that, as a title, it's probably poor though. Naruto's eye twitched, but he reeled his irritation in, and read on. The particular civilian classmate's annoying whisper reverberated through the classroom, OMG, what if he's dieting? He's probably fat underneath that baggy jumpsuit he has. Naruto mentally cringed at her voice, and inwardly sighed, that was by far one of the stupidest things he had ever heard. Suddenly everyone laughed, as another random student responded to her not too subtle whisper, the dope is a shrimp. He's the shortest, and the weakest in the class. Naruto fought the desperate urge to scowl and challenge them to show how scrawny he was. Being shorter than everyone else was a sore spot for him, because he wasn't just shorter than all the guys, he was shorter than all the girls too. Even the timid Hinata. However, instead of beating that particular owner of the last insult, Naruto gritted his teeth and continued on reading instead of reacting crassly. If he did, that would have meant that they had successfully got him to react to their stupid insults. So he kept calm and maintained his slightly irritated but mostly calm composure. However, there was one thing he couldn't ignore. The sound of a group of fangirls squealing and stampeding in the hallway to walk next to a certain object of their affection announced the arrival of a certain Ichiha. Naruto turned his attention back to his book, Great. Sasuke Ichiha walked into class with a glare that radiated hatred. Needless to say, the massacre of his clan didn't bode well with him. When his eyes briefly scanned the room and fell upon a certain Uzumaki, who was propped on a hand supported by his elbow, looking down at a book without a care in the world, Sasuke saw red and marched over towards the class stove with his fangirls right behind him. Sasuke didn't know why he felt such anger towards the blonde whiskered boy, but he didn't care. It probably had something to do with the fact that Naruto was the only thing that Sasuke could tie to the memories of his brother. Sasuke knew it wasn't a justifiable reason it wasn't even a rational one, regardless he just simply did not care. Sasuke stood in front of Naruto in a position that demanded attention. He had his arms crossed on his chest and stared at the boy with a raging stare. Students had mostly filled the class by and had noticed the dark atmosphere. When they pinpointed the source of it, they sucked in a huge breath of anticipation. At the sound of the collective intake of breaths, Naruto looked up, finally bringing his attention out of the book and to his surroundings. He looked to his right and found a brooding Ichiha shooting daggers via eyes at him. Naruto stared at the boy not one foot away from him for several moments. Naruto blinked. Then he shrugged and returned his attention back to his book. Sasuke growled, no one should be ignoring him. He just had his clan massacred. Granted, he didn't see the horrors because before he could even step inside the clan compound, his brother appeared before him and knocked him out cold with a simple neck chop. Regardless, having to wake up to your clan being killed was a very tragic event to wake up to. When he woke up, he decided that he would kill his brother, but first, he needed to get stronger, and he was gonna do just that, and he was gonna have everyone witness it. But for everyone to witness it, he needed their attention. At all times, even the dobes. Naruto, noticing that Sasuke seemed a bit irritated, decided to move to the corner of the room. It was wording him out that Sasuke was all up in his business. The emo survivor of the Ichiha clan was way too damn close for comfort. 
Lino Yamanaka and Sakura Haruno along with the rest of the class, stood in front of the room, staring at the very odd scene before them. Even the Ichiha fangirl club had stopped following the brooding Ichiha, and went to the front of the room to witness what was going on along with their classmates. Currently, Naruto was moving about the room, and taking seats in different spots. Normally, they would have chalked this off to Naruto just being Naruto, but the odd thing was wherever the blonde boy moved, a very baleful Sasuke Ichiha would follow it and no one really knew what to do. Naruto sighed for what seemed like the 10th time since class started. The Ichiha survivor was seriously starting to piss him off. Naruto was seriously debating if it was worth using Guy's gift, he was really that mad. But just as he decided to do something, a disheveled Inuzuka air pushed his way between the crowd painting. Kiba Inuzuka looked like he hadn't slept in a week. And truth to be told, he hasn't. The source of his disgruntled ire was currently tucked into his armpit. It was taking all of Inuzuka's patience not to obliterate the damn thing. Kiba ran through everyone like a bull, and saw Naruto sitting in the corner with the last Ichiha glaring at the blonde. Kiba didn't care. He needed this problem taken care of ASAP. So he marched on over, shoved the survivor of the massacre away, and proceeded to thrust a ball into the arms of Naruto. It's your problem now. The sleep-deprived Inuzuka shouted before sitting down next to the young blonde. Akamaru was perched on top of Kiba's head looking, as tired, as his owner. Naruto looked at the downed Ichiha before putting his attention on the ball that was shoved into his hands. Noticing the texture of said ball, Naruto frowned, since when were balls furry? Suddenly, the ball unfurled, and two brown eyes peered back at him. The ball then protruded a wagging tail. And it barked. Naruto blinked furiously. Kiba. What the hell is this? Said Inuzuka boy looked up with tired eyes. What the hell do you think it is? It's a dog you dumbass. Naruto gnashed his teeth in annoyance. I know that. What I meant was, why the hell is it in my arms? Cause it's yours now. Kiba replied that sounded awfully like a yawn. The hell it is. Well it is Sue. Why can't you take care of it? Naruto yelled. That my friend, is because that puppy is an absolute bitch, pun intended, and because of it being mixed with two dominant and alpha mammals, I can't take care of it. That's what my mom told my anyway so I'm giving it to you. That told me nothing other than the fact that you're too much of a pansy to take care of it. Kiba's reply was to simply give a loud snore, signifying he was in a deep slumber. Naruto gave a frustrated growl, and returned his attention to the puppy. Naruto carefully placed the puppy on the desk, and lowered his head, so his face was level with the young canine. The puppy jumped forward, and not on the blonde's google. Disgusted, Naruto took off his saliva-wrapped goggles, and placed it on the desk, so the puppy could continue chewing it. However, he couldn't help the small smile from stretching on his face. The girls of the class walked forward with a blush on their face, Naruto really looks different with his bangs down. No one wanted to admit how cute the young blonde looked without his stupid giant goggles attached to his forehead. Especially Ino and Sakura. Naruto paid the gathering crowd of girls around him no attention. The puppy was now sitting, and waiting expectantly at the boy with his tail wagging happily. The pup tilted his head at Naruto. Naruto mirrored the pup's action, and also tilted his head the same way the young canine tilted his head in. Kawe. The girls all squealed. They couldn't decide which was more cuter, the boy or the puppy. Eh? The loud noise brought Naruto's attention to all the girls surrounding him, and when the crowd of females noticed Naruto looking at them weirdly, they all blushed, and retreated back to the front of the class. Shrugging at their weird antics, Naruto returned his attention to the puppy. Making a decision, Naruto scooped up the puppy, and walked to the front of the class. All the girls waited with bated breath, and watched the boy approach. However, they all looked disappointed, as Naruto walked past them, and towards the door. Sasuke shook with rage, not only did the class dope ignore him, but the blonde had somehow managed to rip the attention from everyone that he, a noble Uchiha, dope. Where the hell are you going? Sasuke shouted with rage. Suck my ass. Came the reply of a. All the boys chuckled while the girls didn't know whether or not to laugh or glare, after the recently discovered cute blonde. While everyone was distracted, Ino walked to where Naruto was sitting before he left. She quickly looked around before grabbing the goggles Naruto left behind. I'm only taking it because the dog was so cute. At least, that's what Ino told herself, as she stowed it in Kamino's were. Satisfied that no one had seen her, Ino went to sit down in a seat that was surprisingly not near her Sasuke-kun. Sakura frowned, why did Ino pig take Naruto's goggles? Channeling chakra throughout his whole body, Naruto murmured a soft, hench. A plume of smoke encased his body, and instead of an orange-clad ninja, and black puppy, a wild-looking boy with red facial tattoos that identified him as an Inuzuka took place. The black puppy turned into that of a white one. Kiba Inizuka and Akamaru now stood in place of Naruto and his black pup. Kiba grinned and petted Akamaru. The disguised couple of pup and kids then headed towards Kiba Air their home. Kiba reached the Inizuka compound without trouble and nodded to the guards calmly. On the inside, however, Kiba was nervous as hell. He had never done anything as risky as this. He sighed with relief as the guard simply nodded back. Once reaching what seemed to be the main house, Kiba stepped in and took off his sandals. Once done with that, he called out, Mom, I'm home. Sue Minizuka looked naturally feral. 
She had spiky, untamed brown hair, vertical slit-like pupils, elongated canine teeth, and nails. To be honest, when Naruto had first seen her drop off Kiba, he had thought she had looked like a grown-up version of Kiba with womanly curves. A very disturbing notion indeed. Who the hell are you? Came a very gruff female voice. Kiba smiled nervously, what are you meant mom? It's meow, I tie. Soon Minizuka punched her son right in the forehead, successfully dispelling the hench. In place of where her son was standing, was an orange-clad boy on his rear nursing the firming lump on his forehead. Immediately recognizing the boy as the, she relaxed. Come on and pop, and take a seat in this room. She gestured to a large living room right at the entrance. Naruto nodded fearfully, how does she see through my hench? Even Jiji himself can't see through it unless I messed up something in my speech. Well, are you just gonna sit there or are you gonna come in? Soon quipped with an eyebrow raised. Naruto stood up abruptly with an eep. And bowed quickly before scurrying past her. Soon shook her head with amusement, the boy could be quite endearing. Naruto took in his surroundings with an impressed look, the living room was pretty big. The floor was made out of wood, and it supported several large sofas in a U-shaped pattern. In the middle was a very long table that was the perfect height for someone to rest their legs on. Naruto smirked, he didn't really think Tsum would allow anyone to rest their legs on the table. Actually, he didn't really think anyone was stupid enough to do so. So he sat on his knees in a respectful position while waiting for Tsum. Tsum's amused expression became even more so when she saw how respectful the brat was being in her living room. As she walked by him, she picked him up by the collar of his jacket, and threw him unceremoniously on the couch, eliciting a surprised yelp from him. Alright spill a pup, what do you want? Came the rather crass manner of speech. Naruto sat up, and gulped, a w well, first, can I ask you a question? Shoot. How'd you see through my hench? Hokage Jiji told me it was pretty flawless. Truth to be told, I didn't even see anything, your hench was damn near flawless. The only thing you had forgotten was how tired my baby boy was. Kiba hadn't slept well in a whole week because of some rescue pup. Soon chuckled. Naruto Fasipam, of course. How could he forget how tired the mutt was? He sighed, well Tsum sama, I came here. Tsum san. I don't want that political shit here, you hear besides, it makes me feel old. Tsum practically barked, as she bopped him on the head. Naruto sweat dropped, hi. Erm, Tsum san, Kiba dropped me off a puppy today, and I was just looking to return it. Tsum looked surprised, why don't you keep it? We have too much litter upkeep compared to the number of shinobis in our clan. Naruto grinned nervously, and scratched the back of head, oh I just can't. Tsum frowned, and why is that? Do you perhaps not like dogs? She growled threateningly. Naruto shook his head frantically, no. No. I always wanted a dog, and stuff, but I don't know how to take care of a dog he continued softly while looking down, plus I don't think the villagers would like me being happy, and they would kill take him away. Tsum's heart shattered, the boy was in all honesty just looking out for the puppy. Automatically, Naruto had earned respect from her just from that statement alone. She sighed, she truly wanted the boy to enjoy the experience of finding companionship and camaraderie in a dog, but the young blonde was right, the villagers would most likely kill the puppy for circumstances that were out of the boy's control. The villagers were truly despicable. She sighed, alright Naruto, let me see the puppy. Naruto looked up and beamed, thank you Tsum-sen. Naruto brought out a sleeping canine out of his jacket and carefully placed him on the table. Tsum's eyes widened when she recognized the puppy, this is the pup that Kiba was talking about Tsum shot a glare at Naruto, it was you who rescued this pup. Tsum's face contorted into a furious expression, what in Kami he gave this pup to you. What the hell was he thinking? Hi. Naruto replied nervously. The loud yelling stirred the pup from its sleep, and, as it took in its surroundings, when it recognized the scary looking lady when it had first been brought here by the lookalike boy, it growled. Tsum groaned with frustration, no wonder you want to give it back, the dog is freaking impossible. It respects no one, it doesn't let anyone feed it, you have to throw food at it from 30 feet away, it pisses everywhere, it shits everywhere, and on top of that, it has some big chakra coils, making it the perfect fur companion, but knew, all that potential gone to waste. Naruto frowned, not really understanding where she was going with her rant, Tsum san, why are you saying that about him? The puppy is actually really nice. Excuse me Tsum asked incredulously, no offense pup, but this canine is a Tsanki Tibetan Mastiff mixed with Grey Wolf. Those two breeds by themselves are super difficult to domesticate. So for you to say it's nice, I'm serious. Naruto cried out. Tsum shook her head in a childish fashion. Listen pup, don't you think I would know more about this pup? I've spent a week with it, and trust me when I say it lets no one near it, and I mean no one. Even me, the head of an Incan partnered clan. Naruto crossed his arms on his chest defiantly, well it played with me when Kiba gave it to me. The head of the Inizuka clan chuckled, yeah, and my family loves cats. She snided in mirth-filled sarcasm. Listen up, go ahead, and go home, we'll take care of this problem. She jabbed a finger towards the puppy who bared his teeth towards her. Naruto narrowed his eyes, what do you mean you guys will take care of it? He asked suspiciously. 
though, we'll put it in the pound for several months, and if no one wants it, we'll probably give it to a civilian family, and if that doesn't work, then we're most likely gonna have to let it go. And by that, I mean we're gonna have to kill it soon grimaced, if it manages to grow up, it'll be too dangerous for it to live, especially without training. She hated this part of her duties, but it just had to be done. Sankey Tibetan Mastiffs were incredibly rare in the elemental nations. As far as she was aware, only one merchant sold them here, and he only came once every decade from the very far east, somewhere where no shinobi has ever been. The fact that the pup was bred from a grey wolf added all the more danger to it. How they even found the puppy in Kanoha was beyond a mystery to her. Naruto frowned, the puppy would probably die if was to be let back out. He really wanted to take care of it, but he just didn't know how. He was at a crossroads with himself, an impasse. Naruto growled in frustration before his eyes lit up with an idea. Sum san what if I show you that it's nice? Soon gave a sad smile, the boy was earnestly trying his hardest to save the pup from suffering. It was very much endearing to her. She sighed, Naruto, the only way that this pup would not chew anyone off is if they bonded to it. Sadly, it is only the Inizuka clan that can bond with the more dominant species of canines. Naruto ignored her, and made way to pick the black Tibetan Mastiff up. Soon, alarmed that the boy would do such a reckless thing, lashed out, and grabbed the wrist of the. What the hell do you think you're doing? Naruto rolled his eyes before attempting to shrug her hand off only to find that the iron vice grip would not budge a single bit. Okay okay. I was just kidding Sum san Can you please let go of me now? Naruto pouted. Sum relaxed, and sighed visibly. She retracted her hands. Phew, thank god. Kiba tried bonding with it that way, and he got recto eye. As soon as Sum retracted her hands, Naruto closed the rest of the distance between him and the dog, and scooped him up much to Sum's horrification. Put him down this instance before he'd soon stern pitch changed into that of a surprise one, before he licks you Naruto giggled uncontrollably, as the puppy ravished his face with licks. A smile slowly drew itself on Soon's face, as she quickly retrieved a camera and, click, Naruto, and the puppy halted their actions with white eyes. They slowly turned their head towards the source of the noise and, click, oh I, what the hell is that? Naruto shouted while the puppy barked in agreement, click. Soon laughed, as she held up a blue cube-like structure, this is a Polaroid camera. New technology from Sor no Kuni, land of the sky, apparently, prints out a photo instantly. This is my first time using it so I don't really know oh. There's a printer right here. She waited excitedly, as three strips of photos slipped out of the printer folds. Naruto stared for a few brief moments before shrugging, and returning his attention to proving the dog wasn't a rabbit killer. Soon kept a cautious eye on the pup, and the blonde, she just didn't simply believe that the rebellious dog she had rescued weeks ago was so tamed. Yet, here they were with the alpha bred pup licking the blonde's face. There was one plausible answer even though it wasn't likely, especially since the blonde wasn't in any relation to an Incan partnered clan. Say, Soom started off casually, as Naruto looked at her, what happened when you first met the puppy? Oh? Where to begin well I was walking somewhere, and I heard something. Naruto then recounted his tale of saving the pup from three bigger dogs, and how he waited for the better part of the day to feed the puppy before it passed out. He then explained that he went to Kiba because the villagers weren't really the best option for him. At this, Soom's eyes softened, she knew exactly why the villagers weren't exactly the best option, and truth to be told, she couldn't really blame them. People in general were just simple-minded, everyone used the poor as an outlet for all their anger, pain, suffering, and sorrows for their losses. She didn't condone their actions, but she understood why they did what they did, and why they acted like they did. She didn't like it, but she understood well enough. Hopefully, when young Naruto is revealed to the truth, he'll be accepting of this, as well. But if he wasn't accepting, and decided to kill all the wrongdoers in his life, and rampage in anger, well he had every right to be. She knew of what had transpired the night of the Ichiha massacre with Ichiha, and quite frankly, it was one of the most horrifying things she, and the shinobi council had even thought of. Imagining that happening to Kiba made her shudder with fear, and despair. To think that the blonde could still act this normal astounded her. All shinobis ranked, and higher were told of what had happened to Kanohes, and most grimaced at the gruesome events retold. There were a few however, that took on a joyous expression at the gored expense of the child. She gritted her teeth, as she recalled how pleased the civilian council, and a select few shinobis seemed, when the Sandane recalled the brutal event in the counseling chambers. Those bastards need to get a reality check. I swear the next time I see Hokage-sama I'm going to give him a piece of- Can I see those? Naruto asked, effectively cutting off her train of thoughts. Soon was about to ask what he wanted to see when she saw him point towards the photos she had taken of him, and the pup. Soon chuckled, as she looked briefly at the pictures that depicted happiness, shock, and mock anger. She handed them over. You can keep those pups, and I think you should know something the moment you save the dog that bonded with you. Your actions must have struck a chord or something with the puppy because you helped her that day. Naruto nodded in an understanding fashion, wow. So does that mean that the puppy is I can wait? It's a her. Soon smirked haughtily, of course it is. The female is of course the superior gender. 
Naruto nodded sagely. That made plenty of sense. Sakura and Ino were pretty damn bossy, and no one dared to go against their wishes. So what does that mean? I still don't know how to take care of it, and even if I did, the villagers would still probably try and take her away from me. Naruto scowled, and I definitely don't want that to happen. First off, you need to name the dog. I'm tired of you referring to her as an id and her. Dogs should never be treated as an inferior being. They aren't beneath us. They are our equals. Understood. She glared. Naruto nodded without hesitation. He didn't believe any being was lesser than another. He certainly wasn't gonna treat this dog like that. Naruto stroked his chin and looked up. Soon chuckled at the pose the boy struck. It was amusing to see a pondering expression on a 10-year-old boy who seemed to be thinking too hard for his own good. Let's see Naruto murmured, a name how what should I call you? He turned his attention to the female pup who was happily wagging her tail at him. How about I read you some female names and you can go from there. Tsum offered. Naruto shot her grateful look and nodded, yes please. Tsum immediately started firing off suggestions, alright. There's Maiho, Tamo, Aika, Aimi, Kahaku, Mary, Masa, Rei, Rieko, Satsuko, Takara, Yuriko. She looked at Naruto to see if he had liked any of them. Naruto chewed on his lip and contemplated each name before shaking his head. I don't know any of the names I like. Are there any more names you can suggest? Chiori, Rin, Meko, Ku, Kazumi, Kimiko, Kimi. What do those two mean? Kimiko and Kimi I mean. Naruto asked curiously. Kimiko means Empress Child and Kimi means Noble you like him. Naruto scrunched his face in a thinking manner. Do we have to do this today? I just don't know. Tsum sighed. Although it's better to engrave the name into the pup's head early in its life. I suppose it's not absolutely necessary. But by the end of this week you'll be deciding on one. Understood. Naruto nodded yes ma'am. Good. Now wait here. I'm gonna go get some books for you to study up on. Naruto groaned and received a love tap on the head. And by love tap, I mean punched. Naruto got punched. Naruto looked up at Tsum with a pout. Tsum said. Would you do that? Tsum felt a tick rowing, cause whether you like it or not, this dog has bonded with you. You absolutely need to learn how to take care of it. Now stay put or I'll neuter you. Without waiting for an answer, Tsum walked off to wherever in the compound to retrieve her books. When she returned, she found Naruto lying on his back and playing with the pup. Tsum smiled as Naruto made engine-like noises and maneuvered the female puppy in the air. The puppy seemed to be enjoying itself if the wagging tail and tongue lolling out was any indication to go by. Alright pup, take these books and study up. Leave her the pup here until the end of the week. She still needs proper shots for various things so I'll take care of that. Make sure you have a name when you come back, alright? Naruto nodded, not realizing the full implications of the conversation. He furrowed his brows as the information sorted itself out in his head. Suddenly, he yelled, wait. So, I'm gonna be the one taking care of it. Sum sighed, why else would I be giving you information on how to take care of me on top of that? You are going to be returning here to name the dog. Why would I have you return and name the dog? Soon looked at Naruto, and her eyes softened. The boy seemed torn apart at the revelation that pup was now his. She could tell he was struggling with his wants of receiving a companion, and his moral obligation to see the pup being protected. Listen pup, how about this? I'll babysit the pup until it can fend for itself. I don't want any canine to ever be mistreated. However, that does not mean you can permanently leave him here, understood. Naruto ignored her screaming, and nodded fervently. He was both grateful, and a bit irritated. Grateful because he was given an opportunity to receive a companion for life yet slightly irritated that the puppy wasn't going to be with him 24-7. But he supposed that was a fair trade. Arigatou Gazumasu Tsum Sen. Naruto bowed. Tsum found herself chuckling once more. Make sure that I don't regret this. Naruto's eyes gleamed, oh you won't. Good. Now scram. Naruto squeaked out an incoherent sound as he hastily scurried out. Naruto poured all his attention to the study materials he received from Gai Sensei and the Inuzuka clan head. At one point, Gai-sensei had stopped by to check up on his student and endeavors for his youthful endeavors. Naruto ignored Gai as the man rummaged through his friends screaming how youthful his stock items were. As soon as the rant of how amazingly healthy and youthful the innards of his fridge was, he came over with a giant frown. Naruto-kun. I do not recall me giving you that many books. Unless. You realized how much youth was contained in the information of these books, and you decided that in all your youthfulness, Tsumsama gave it to me. Naruto said casually, as his eyes scanned another passage of information regarding chakra-enhanced canines. Naruto looked up when he heard no response regarding youth. He saw a depressed raining cloud overhead on his tajutsu instructor. A humorously depressed and hurt expression on Guy's face appeared along with a gushing stream of tears. But why would you do such a youthful action my student? Have I failed you in teaching the youthfulness of my ways? For my failures I shall run to Suna, with a northern cow attached to my chest stand. Dai sensei. Calm down. She's not training me. Guy looked at his student with a glint of hope in his eyes. Well, she technically is training me, but not really. I mean she is teaching me via these books. Hearing those words, Guy continued wailing. 
Naruto exhaled a forceful breath in frustration, Gai Sensei. I am going to be getting a dog so that is why I went to Tsum San for information on how to take care of it. So will you please calm down. Upon hearing those words, Gai's sullen demeanor quickly became 180, and he struck his patented nice guy pose. With a thumb up and teeth shining, Gai smiled and laughed boisterously. Of course my youthful student would never abandon me. For my youthful thoughts and assumptions, I shall run 700 laps around the village. By that time, I expect my student to finish and retain all the materials given to him. Naruto furred his brow. How long will it take you to run 700 laps? 3 hours my dear student. You expect me to finish all 72 books in 3 hours. I cocked his head. Whatever do you mean my dear student? This should be easy for you, given that you have the cage bunch and no jutsu at your disposal. Naruto peered at him suspiciously, and what the hell ow. None of that youthful language. Naruto pouted, as he rubbed the bruise that sported on top of his head. Sorry. Jeez. Anywho. What does a cage bunch and no jutsu have to do with anything? Other than fighting, all it does is send me memories, and I can't really do anything with that besides. Naruto's eyes widened. Oh. But I exposed all his shining teeth in a bright smile. Indeed Naruto-kun. I am glad you were able to come to the conclusion on your own. Naruto shook his head, and smacked himself in the face for being so stupid, dang it. I thought I could use something like that, but I didn't think that anyone could have created something that useful. I only used it to spar with myself at this point. I frowned, and his voice lacked its usual exuberance, and in place of it was a seriousness Naruto rarely heard. Naruto, who taught you the cage bunch and no jutsu. I'm sorry to say that they didn't do a very adequate job of informing you of all the features to that. Naruto rubbed his head nervously, actually sensei uh, I sort of learned it by myself. Eyes eyes widened before it narrowed, that particular was an A rank to explain please. So Naruto went into the general gist of what had happened even after Ruka sensei's death. However, he did not mention that Mizuki had been killed by him. He didn't trust anyone, but the Jiji with that piece of information. It wasn't that he didn't trust Gai sensei, but he didn't consider the man he had come to consider as one of his precious people to change about him. When he had finished his story about the eventful night of the exam Mizuki team gave him, he almost went on to telling him about the events that were shrouded with Itachi's involvement. He quickly caught himself though, it probably wouldn't sit too well with Gai sensei or anyone for that matter, that the village pariah was involved with the mass murdering traitor to the Ichiha clan. Regardless, Naruto knew it probably wouldn't have mattered if he had told Guy about the brutal torture he received the night of the massacre. Yep, the story with just Aruka sensei would probably cause Guy to start crying waterfalls whilst hugging him. Much like right now. Turning blue, Naruto managed to croak out a horse stroke, can't breathe. Although Naruto didn't tell him, Guy already knew what had happened to him on the night of the massacre, as did every other. Guy immediately dropped his chokehold air, hug, and apologized with his same old exuberance, oh youthful kami. I apologize greatly for youthful straining your esophagus with my limbs. Oh youthful kami. Naruto kun I apologize greatly for youthful straining your esophagus with my limbs. Elsewhere, a 17 year old with violet purple styled in a short spiky fan ponytail haired female clad in a tan trench coat walked by. She had light brown pupilless eyes, and she wore a fitted mesh bodysuit that stretched from her collarbone down to her thighs. The mesh body armor showed off her rather curvaceous figure. Her trench coat had a purple inseam and a pocket on each side. Underneath her trench coat, she was wearing a dark orange mini skirt, a dark blue belt, and pale grey shin guards. Next to her was another female of the same age. Kuronayuhi was a fair-skinned woman, and she had long black untamed hair reaching her upper back, red in color outfit, consisting of a red mesh armor blouse with only the right sleeve visible. Bandage wrapping covered her upper thighs, and nothing covered her long, and rather attractive legs. However, the most prominent feature were her eyes, a vibrant red that held most men mesmerized. Benko Mitarashi choked on her dango. She blanched, and dry heaved, as she recognized the voice, Oh Kami, I fucking knew he was gay. Kurenai frowned, I'm sure there is an explanation for his choice of words. Yet Kurenai couldn't help, but think that the evidence was overwhelmingly in the favor of Guy playing for the other team, so to speak. Come on Night chan He's a gay. Homo. Flaming Flamingo. Take your pick, but you heard it loud, and clear. Anko cried out. Anko looked at the sake bottle, and cup in her hand, and probably threw away the cup that was used to pace the rate of consumption for said alcohol, and downed the whole bottle in one go. She winced slightly at the amount of burning that followed after drinking the liquor, but it had to be done, I've totally gotta forget about that shit. Never ever do I want to hear anything sexual that involves or revolves around the bush freak. With that thought, she procured another sake bottle from thin air, and downed that one in one go, as well, she closed her eyes, as the alcohol hit her. Fucking shit I better get drunk enough to forget about today. She howled, as she brought a third sake bottle to her lips. Kurenai shook her head, and rolled her eyes. Sometimes Anko was such a drama queen. Kurenai pried the bottle away from a protesting Anko, and said, No getting drunk before a mission. Now hurry up, we don't want to keep waiting. Anko pouted, who cares about the old coat? My mental stability is at stake here. Kurenai rolled her eyes once more, I think you lost it a long time ago. 
Why are we talking about our V-card? Cause I know I didn't lose mine. In fact, I gave it away to a certain red-eyed. Anko leered at a blushing Kurunai lecherously. Anko. Don't say that aloud. Kurunai hissed. Anko pouted. You're no fun. Not what you thought a couple weeks ago. Muttered a still scarlet face Kurunai. Naruto took in deep breaths to refill the oxygen that was lacking from his lungs. He looked up to see Guy still crying about how youthful his actions were. He was screaming self-repercussions he was going to inflict upon himself, while Naruto looked back down while shaking his head. Sometimes, the man was an idiot. And all the time, Naruto was an idiot for training with him. He frowned, as he thought he heard a female cursing the day, as the bane of her existence or something, but he just shrugged. The inhabitants of Kanagakur no Sato could be extremely weird. Example 1. Mito Guy. After that, I shall crawl backwards up the Hokage Monument. Hey, Gai-sensei. Yes my youthful student. Weren't you gonna go run around the village? Indeed I shall do that now. Ready, set, go. When his self-timer got to go, Guy sped off. Naruto sighed, and shook his head with a slightly amused smile. He then turned his attention to the matters at hand. Forming the tiger seal, Naruto muttered a quick cage bunch of no jutsu. Several plumes of smoke appeared, and dissipated to reveal twenty clones. Naruto cheerfully handed out all the books to the grumbling clones, and went back to his own. Man. Why do we have to do this? Boss sucks for making us do this. Boss blows. He really is an idiot. The real Naruto rolled his eyes. You diphongs, I am you guys, and you guys are me. If I'm an idiot, then we all are. Silence met the ears of the original Naruto, who had a satisfied smile on his face. There. That sure shut them the hell up. Score 1 for the original Nair. You still suck. Surprisingly enough, Naruto finished reading the pamphlets and books of information in two hours. However, he found that he didn't really know a lot of the bigger and complicated words, so he also took to reading some dictionary books. All in all, he felt that it was a pretty productive day. It was definitely better than learning nothing at the academy. This time when he dispelled his clones, he made sure to do it at set intervals. His last experience with clones made him shudder with fear. The headache that came along with dispelling a massive amount of clones was most definitely not pleasant. So for the first set of dispelling clones, he dispelled two, and found that the influx of information wasn't painful at all. He then dispelled three, and found like the first dispelling of clones, it didn't hurt. Feeling confident, Naruto dispelled five clones, and also found, to his delight, that it didn't hurt. Now armed with an incredible sense of boldness, he dispelled the remaining ten clones, and shouted with triumph after he sorted through the information that was retained in the clones. Naruto frowned, as he waited for a certain Tajutsu specialist to return to his abode. He didn't have anything to do so he wanted to train. It was that or go back to the academy for the remainder of class. And he wasn't gonna do that, man. Kai-sensei is taking forever, I'm never gonna be at this rate. The blonde demon container complained. He went to smack his forehead out of habit when it actually came in contact with his forehead. Usually his goggles were there to protect it, so he could actually put some force behind his habitual self-inflicting frustrated forehead smacking. Ai tai. What the hell? Where the hell is my gago damn it? I left it back in the classroom when the puppy chewed it up. Ugh. Naruto raked his hands downward on his face, as he let out a frustrated groan, Kuzo. Where should I go to get a new one? Naruto sat down crisscross style with his arms folded on his chest, as he tried thinking of how to obtain new goggles. Damn it. I wish I had someone to help me with this. If only I could an idea flashed through his head, and he slapped his forehead again out of habit. Ow. Shit. But damn it. I'm such an idiot. Quickly forming the tiger seal, Naruto cried out, cage bunch and no jutsu. Three clones poofed into existence, and sat with him forming a neat little cross. The clones raised their eyebrows in a questioning manner, why are we here boss? Naruto nearly slapped his forehead again, how do you guys not know? You guys are me. We should have the same thought process. Drawing blank looks from his clones, Naruto pouted, I need some help with finding a new set of goggles. So getting this amazing idea he gestured to the clones, of forming a Naruto committee, I summoned you guys. One of the clones dissipated from slapping his forehead too hard. The clone didn't know if the boss was a genius or an idiot savant. The original Naruto narrowed his eyes at his dispelled clones. Naruto quickly replaced that cage bunchin, and he turned. You could have us henge into a pair of goggles. One of the clones suggested excitedly. No, you can go without the goggles. Not doing that either. You can draw the goggles on your forehead. Kami you guys suck. Hey. Were you? HMPH. The real Naruto took on a bored expression, as his clones discussed in the most absurd way how to acquire a new set of goggles. Eventually, Naruto stood up, and shouted, Alright enough. Forget all your stupid ideas. Everyone is gonna use a henge to find, and buy one. Immediately, all the clones protested this simple idea by shouting that their idea was better, and more sophisticated. The original Naruto pinched the bridge of his nose, as he tried to control his anger. Face switching with irritation, the original Naruto growled. Suddenly, another brilliant idea sprang to mind, alright. 
First one to bring the same styled Google will get the limited edition cup of ramen. All arguments and protests ended with the clones stumbling and tripping over each other while they headed to the exit, screaming passionately about their sacred and beloved ramen. Oh you bastards. When you're done, I'm gonna be at the training grounds. Naruto yelled after them. The clones flipping him the bird showed that they had acknowledged his statement. Naruto sighed as he locked his door and left a note to Guy that explained he'd be at the training grounds. Man disrespectful clones Naruto mentally grumbled. Yash. Time to get out of here. Excited at the prospect of training, Naruto dashed to his intended destination with eagerness. From the trees, Guy stood on a branch with the side of his shoulder against the tree for support. He watched Naruto leave his apartment with a proud gleam in his eyes. Guy sighed. I really don't want to give him to you I have grown most attached to the youthful boy. Mama, it's not like you won't see him again. Besides, I'm sure you'll be getting your genin team in the next year or so. Came the voice of one Hata Kakashi. I scowled slightly, even so, what happens if he wishes to pursue Tajutsu as his specialty? It won't happen. Kakashi replied flatly. Seeing that guy was about to argue, Kakashi quickly held his hand up, but in the tiny whimsical chance that it does happen, he will be your main student. Regardless, I will help him better himself as a shinobi, no matter what. Satisfied with a smile, Guy nodded, of course, that is in your right, seeing, as to how the father was your sensei you know, the boy reminds me greatly of our youthful comrade Abisho, wouldn't you agree my rival? Guy sighed, as he didn't hear a response. However, this response, or non-response, was to be expected from his rival. Guy looked to his left at the now vacant spot where Kakashi had been with a sad look. Approaching the subject of Abito Ichiha with his youthful rival was obviously still a sore subject. It was ironic really, Naruto was very much like Abito in both appearance and mentality. Both were rather loud and lacking in the academy, if someone were to dye Naruto's hair black, they would be hard pressed to identify him if they were looking at him from the back. Now if you kept the dyed hair and replaced Naruto's blue eyes with the classic Uchiha eyes, you would absolutely be unable to tell the difference. Of course you gotta remove the whiskers too. He looked towards the direction that his young student had left in, hopefully Naruto could restore Kakashi's will of fire completely. Naruto undid his henge, as he reached the training field he used to usually train with Guy. Standing in place, he stood on his tipped toes and stretched his limbs towards the skies. Coming back down, he yawned and slammed his fist into an open palm, he grinned, alright. Let's get down to business. With that being said, he formed the tiger seal and yelled, cage bunch and no jutsu. Two shadow clones popped up and immediately went into the Gokin, iron fist, stance, and faced the original. Naruto grinned, alright you bastards. Sparring time. Bring it on. The two shadow clones immediately shouted battle cries before charging at him. Naruto smiled wryly, was he really that dumb? He realized that there was a chance that he'd probably actually know, he actually would do that if it was a fight. His smile turned into a frown, he'd have to fix that mentality otherwise it'd become a big issue. His musings were cut off, as the cage bunchin sent a sweeping low kick and a punch aimed at his face simultaneously. Naruto smirked, although his clone's battle tactics were a bit flawed, he couldn't help but admit that the tandem in which his clone's attacked was pretty dang good. Realizing that the attacks were about to land if he didn't do anything, he leapt backwards to avoid the blows and settled into his own Gokin, Iron Fist, stance. The excitement was palpable from his body as his gaze darted to and from between his two opponents. There was no panic for him because he's been in situations very similar to this. Bullies and villagers always came at him in numbers. It was the only chance they had really, if it was one on one, he'd simply run away. He wasn't ever allowed to fight back, but seeing as to how the villagers and shinobis were getting bolder, so to speak, he had to learn how to take on multiple opponents. Besides, you'd never know what would happen on the battlefield as a ninja. There'd probably be times in which he'd find himself outnumbered. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he analyzed his current situation and his next course of action. The cage bunchins, seeing the calculative eyes of the original, split towards two different directions. Trying to keep out of his line of sight as much as possible, the clones rested on the peripherals of the real Naruto. Naruto smiled, guess his clones actually weren't that dumb. He paused for a moment and frowned, he essentially just called himself dumb. He shook himself out of his musings as his cage bunchins came at him from both sides. Just as the hits were about to make contact, Naruto jumped and sent his legs towards both sides, effectively stalemating the punches aimed at him in midair. Instead of letting his clones recover from their slightly shocked stupor, Naruto seized the opportunity and kicked off a fist of a clone that sent him towards the other clone that was still in contact with his foot. Latching onto the forearms and bicep with his hands, Naruto swung the foot that he kicked off of the other clone and sent it crashing into the clone's face he was currently latched onto. Naruto smirked as the clone he had just hit dispelled. As soon as he landed, the clone he now had behind him came in with a kick of its own. The original Naruto, having just landed, sensed that he had no time to dodge. So he did the next best thing you could possibly do when a hit was imminent. 
Bai Sensei had taught him that sometimes you couldn't escape a situation no matter how much this could apply to every aspect in life, not just action-oriented situations, but tactics, politics, and definitely romance too. When Naruto had been told that, he nodded sagely, as if he understood everything that Gai Sensei had just said. He could've if he wanted to, but he didn't care about those things. Action was what Naruto was about, so he paid little attention to the other things Gai Sensei had lectured him on. It's not like he had to worry about any of those things anyways. Yet. But just be- So that's exactly what he did with his clone's kick rapidly approaching him. He rolled with it. Going in the direction the kick would've careened him towards, he passed a solid contact, as a glancing blow. It stung, but it wasn't nearly as painful as how it would have been had the kick made direct contact. He recovered in a one kneeling position whilst caressing the right side of his face. He grimaced, as he felt a slight swell on his jaw, that was gonna leave a mark. The cage bunch and smirked, and the original scowled, seeing arrogance on his pseudo body irked him. Definitely don't like being cocky like the team. Gotta fix that if it becomes a problem confidence is okay, arrogance is not. Both clone, and original Naruto shot off towards each other, and engaged in an exchange of fists, kicks, elbows, and knees. Eventually Naruto managed to one-up his clone by sending a fierce kick towards his clone's knee. Naruto panted slightly, his stamina was nothing short of amazing, but facing someone who was of the same caliber, as you would wear you down. Shaking his head, he formed the tiger seal, and formed five cage bunchins. Everyone took their respective Gokan stance, and faced the original. Naruto grimaced, it was gonna be a long day. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.